Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rios with another video tutorial. For this particular video tutorial, we're going to be working on uh, making a maze game using Scratch 3.0. So uh, for the first step, what we're going to do is that we're going to look for the maze. This video will only be about making the actual maze. Then in other parts of the video, we're going to see uh, the rest of how we make the rest of the game. So let me go first to Google. In Google, you type Maze PNG. As you type Maze PNG and you go to Images, it is important that you write PNG so that the background you get from the images is actually transparent or white. Now, notice that you already have some images that have the uh, transparent background right here. This means these images don't really have a transparent background. When an image has a real transparent background, it will look white here and when you click on it, you'll notice that the white disappears and then you get this checked background. But if you already have this checked background, please do not choose this type of images right away because then this checked background is also part of the image and it will be probably difficult for you to remove. For that, I suggest you select then one that has a white solid background. So make sure that you pick the an image that has a solid white background instead of a transparent one if in case you get too confused. I will just scroll down and look for a maze that will match the purpose of this game. Now remember that the objective of making a maze game is not necessarily to have uh, your sprite going from point A to point B so that you find the exit of the maze. But the idea is to make the uh, maze challenging by adding some other attributes to the game so that it becomes difficult or challenging for the player to actually lose the maze. Uh, here I have a, a very good example of what uh, the type of maze we really need. So I'm going to click on that one. And once Google shows me a preview of that maze, I'm going to right click on the image and put open image a new tab. So I have the full version of the image right here. Now I can right click and save the image. So I say ima save image as. I make sure it's in pictures. And in pictures, I'm going to name it differently. So I'm going to put just maze game one and I click save. Now that we have already gotten our maze from the internet, now we go back to scratch. Since we're going to be using other sprites, we don't really necessarily need the, the cat. We're going to click on the trash can to get rid of it. So I click the trash can and it's gone. Now to look for our maze, please do not click on this icon. Just move your mouse gently on it and then move your mouse right on top of those different options until you find the one that says Upload Sprite. Once you get to Upload Sprite, now you click to Upload Sprite to find your maze. Make sure you're in picture. If you're in any other part of the directory, please click on picture. Then in save picture, you click there and you put maze, in this case maze game one. And it's right there. You type whatever name you have for your sprite and you just click open and it will open right here. As you noted, the sprite is too small. We need to rescale this sprite and we also need to remove the white background. Even though here it does not look like uh, it will be something important to do, it really is. So to do that, we will go here to custom. When we click on custom, you'll see that you can tell the difference between the white background and a transparent background, something that you cannot see over here on this side. So what you do is that you get the Fill Bucket tool. If you're in any other tool, just click go to the Fill Bucket tool. Then go to the Fill Options, and regardless of whatever color you have, make sure you go to the red diagonal line. The red diagonal line means that you're going to add a transparent background to the object as long as what you're clicking is a solid color. In this case, that's the reason why we need a solid white. If you have a gradient, this tool is not going to work. It's just going to remove one of the different shades of the gradient, but it's not going to remove all of it. So please make sure that if you have a maze with a white background, make sure it's not a gradient background. Now, once I click on the white, you will notice that the white transparent, I mean the white background is transparent now. Let me undo and show you again. When I click on the white with this tool, you can notice that the white background is gone. And that's what we're looking for. So now we don't have this white background around. Now it's time to rescale the picture. And for that, I will go to the select tool. I'll go to the select tool 
and with the select tool I will just make a rectangle around my maze make sure that you select the entire maze not any part inside because you will be caught in the maze make sure you just actually select the maze once you select the maze now you can stretch up not so much right there you can stretch to the bottom we can stretch to the right and we can also stretch to the left let me see uh -huh. I lost the tool if you lose the tool you do that again select stretch up stretch left to the right and to the bottom and now you switch tool to any other tool so it applies the change you will notice that your maze is in the center here but it's not in the center in the canvas area or the stage area so what you're going to do is that before you do, do that you're going to get the eraser erase any other part of the maze that you don't need in my case I don't need these arrows and now we will go to the coding part in the coding part you will go to events and in events you are going to place a green flag block as you put this green flag block, then you're going to go to looks. In looks, you're going to look for the blocks named hide, show, and go to front layer. You will knit these blocks together so that the computer will know where you want this to be located. We're only using one block to finish the script. You go to motion and in motion you go to go to x and a value here and y and another value you will put this block between the height and the show when you do that you will change the value of x to zero and the value of y to zero now if you click the green flag you will notice that your maze will go straight to the center with this we finish uh, part one for this series of videos on how to make a maze game using Scratch 3.0. Please watch the next video to see what is next on how to do a maze game using Scratch 3.0.